Have you ever had one of those moments where the amount of money you thought you had in your bank account totally doesn't line up with the reality of it? That's happened to me way too many times, which is why nowadays I like to make sure I'm keeping a close eye on how much is coming in and how much is going out. One of the ways you can focus on the latter is by setting up a budget or spending tracker in your journal. Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karin, and today I'm going to be taking you through some ideas for styles of spending tracker you can use in your journal. If you are less interested in tracking your spending and more interested in tracking your saving, I do have my video from last week that looked at different styles of saving trackers ideas and that one is linked in the cards above. Today I'll be showing you how I track my spending and then going through some of the ideas I have for how you could set up your own tracker. As usual, the equipment I used in setting up these pages is linked in the description box below. So let's jump in. As I've shown you before, I prefer to keep track of my spending in an Excel spreadsheet that I designed. This allows me to log down my daily spending in a number of categories I wanna track and then Excel will add up all of the totals by month for me and put them on a summary or overview page. This includes small bar graphs in each of the cells so I can see where I've spent a lot and where I've only spent a little. I do technically sell these budgets, so if you wanted more information on that, please do let me know. I really prefer tracking my spending in this way because I like to break my spending down into a lot of different categories and it would really take quite a while to write all that out in my journal. The first idea I have here is just a general spending log, which has space to write down the date, the amount that was spent, the category that that spending falls under, and then any notes about the items purchased. Down the bottom there's also a summary space for each category, the maximum spending goal or budget for how much you want to spend on that category in the month, the total that it actually came to, and then the difference between those two values. Depending on how you calculate it, you'll want that value either to be negative or positive each month. So if you were doing the total minus the goal, hopefully that number will be negative, meaning that you came in under your budget. If you're doing the reverse, however, so the goal minus the total, you'll want that value to be positive, showing that you've still got money left over. Here I'm just filling in some examples of the things you could be writing down as taken from my own personal budget. Because I've gotten comments about it previously, please do remember that I'm in New Zealand using the New Zealand dollar, so some of the numbers here might make it seem like I'm spending a strange amount on things. Here I've calculated the difference as the goal or budgeted amount minus the total amount spent. This means that a positive number is where I came in under budget, and a negative number is where I actually went over budget. Although the spending totals here are reflective of how much I do spend, the goals here aren't reflective of the actual goals I set myself. Instead of actually writing in the negatives or positives for each number, I've used arrows on this one, showing that a positive number is represented by an up arrow, and a negative number is represented by a down arrow. This style of budget is good for people who make some, but not a huge number of transactions each month just given the amount that you actually have to write out for each entry and the amount of space to log what you're spending your money on. This next budget style is for people who prefer to consider their spending as either monthly expenses or weekly expenses. This top section has each of the things that are charged monthly, so for example rent or loan repayments, internet, power, gas, etc. While this lower section here has space for the weekly expenses as broken down by week. So for each week we have the spending categories, the amount that you've budgeted for them, the actual amount spent, and then again that difference column. I think it's valuable to have a difference column so you can see where your budgeting was effective or realistic versus where you under budgeted or didn't fully consider some of your upcoming costs. Again, I'm just going in here and putting down some values to show how this could be filled in. On to our next one, this would not be one of my idea videos without a graph. I've seen this one done a couple of times, and it can give you a really good impression of your annual spending habits for regular bills. I've put a key up the top here, including two monthly expenses, so gas and power, but you could use this one to track more. 
really anything that gets charged on a monthly basis. Down the bottom here we have each of the months of the year, and then up the side here you write down a regular interval of amounts of money. These two little lines here mean that I'm not going to be starting near zero, it's a break in this axis. And you'll want to choose a range of values that allows you to actually make the most of this graph for all of the things you want to track. So let's just say that for this expense tracker, my gas and power falls around the same values each month, and those values are always over $100, but usually under $200. I might choose to start this at $90 and work my way up. While I'm filling this one out, you can see that the nice part about this style of spending tracker is that you can easily see the trends you have throughout the year, which can really help when it comes to future budgeting of these categories. It's good to mention also that the data I'm putting down here doesn't come from my expenses. We get our gas and power charge combined, so I'm not actually sure how much I spend on one or the other. I'm also not claiming that this data would be an accurate representation of what anybody's spending would look like, for us at least, and for the most part, our gas and power bills do go up over the winter, and for us that's in the June, July, August months. So that would probably be the section of the graph I'd expect to see the highest prices. As we talked about in last week's video, you could also put in the data that you had for the year prior to see how you're spending this year compares to the year before, and possibly use it to challenge yourself to spend less on these things. This budget is similar to the second one, However, it has a bit more detail for the monthly budgeting categories, and it also has the weeks and categories swapped in this weekly section. So on the previous tracker, we had each section being a week with the categories down the side, whereas on this one, we have each of the sections being a category and the weeks listed on the side. This one is helpful for you to be able to compare how your spending in each of these categories tracks throughout a month. And similar to the idea from the line graph, you can use this to challenge yourself to decrease your spending in these categories from week to week, wherever possible. Going back up to this top section, here we have a bit more structure for the budget setting. So for each of the monthly expense categories, there's space to put down what you spent on it in the prior month, the budget for this month, the actual amount spent come the end of the month, and then the difference between the actual spending and the last month, and the difference between the actual spending and the goal you set for yourself. On this one, there's also a space down the bottom to write down your total spending for the month. While I'm filling this one in as an example, my question for you today, how do you keep track of your spending? Or possibly a more suitable question, do you keep track of your spending? As you've seen, I like to use my Excel budget because it adds everything up for me and I can keep a lot of data in there. Though I do know that people can prefer to have theirs in an analogue form, and thus this video. I'll be doing another video on other money related spreads next week, so feel free to subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. It's also probably worth a mention that the columns for the section down here, we have the space to write down what your budgeted amount is, the actual amount, and then the difference. So quite similar to the one we had back here, just a little bit more compact. Thank you for watching, and if you liked today's video, feel free to go check out another one. Until next time, bye!